Hello and welcome to this video in the wave series. In this one we are going to look at electromagnetic waves or EM for short. We're going to look at what electromagnetic waves are. We're then going to look at the different categories because you can split electromagnetic waves sorry, into seven different categories. So we're going to explore those. Then we're going to look at the uses of those different categories as well as the dangers of those different categories of waves. And then in this one, I thought we'd try having a look at an exam question and we're going to look at break down and, um, breaking down of an exam question and looking at the typical things that you are asked about electromagnetic waves. So as always in all of my videos, we're going to start with some um, recall from the previous things that we've learned. Um, so in a second, a grid will come up on the screen. As soon as that comes up, I'd like you to pause the video. I'd like you to write down your answers to those questions. Even if you're unsure, just write them down. It'll, it'll bring those things to the front of your memory. Then unpause the video, check your responses, and then you'll be ready for the new content. Okay, see you soon. what is an EM wave? Well, when a particle oscillates, we get a wave generated. And if that particle is a charged particle, such as an electron, we get an electromagnetic wave. So oscillate, remember, means moves forwards and backwards. And when we get that, we get a wave produced. And this wave is transverse because this is the direction of energy. So energy is going that way, whereas this wave is going up and down. They're going perpendicular. And remember, if if um, if the oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of energy, perpendicular means at right angle, then the wave is transverse. So it's transverse wave. Now, this part of the wave, because we've got an electron oscillating, this is the electric field. So it says an electric field. Okay. And that's the part of the E, the EM, EM. That's the E, the electric. Now, whenever electricity flows, we also get magnetism. And we get a magnet, a magnet, I can't speak. We get a magnetic field and it flows at 90 degrees. So we'll represent it like that. It's a bit difficult in two dimensions, but that is at 90 degrees to this oscillation. So let's try and represent that. So that should be like that, something like, not the best. Okay, so I'll, I'll I'll highlight it so you can sort of see. So we've got the electric transverse, and then we've also got this other transverse, because it's still at 90 degrees to the oscillation. We've got this magnetic transverse. So rather than writing the word magnetic, I'm going to draw as a magnet. There we go. So that's why it's the E and that's the M. So, so electromagnetic, and that's what an electromagnetic wave is. Now, the properties of EM waves is what makes it special. Now, the key thing, if you remember from the very first video that I did on waves, is we looked at, we said that there were two different categories of waves. We had mechanical waves. Mechanical waves were ones that needed a medium to travel through. So they need to be actually some, some particles, a solid liquid or a gas there, that the particles could vibrate within those, um, within that matter. And the, um, and the wave is passed through it. Whereas we said an electromagnetic wave does not need um, a medium to travel through. So here's the sun. The sun gives out EM waves. Here's a person. And this person is not to scale at all. They're stood on the earth and they're looking out towards the sun. When you look at the sun, we put our sunglasses on to make sure that we don't go blind. Very important, very important idea. And we can see the sun. And the reason why we see the sun is that the light travels from the sun into our eyes, straight line. If we couldn't see the sun, we would we'd see nothing. Everything would be black. That's because that would be because that the sun wouldn't be able to get through this, this, this area here. This area here is space. And space is a vacuum. 
okay? So EM waves, one thing you need to know about them is that they can travel through a vacuum. They do not need particles. They do not need um, a medium to go through. They, they can travel. Um, as well as seeing it, okay, we, we can also feel it. We can, we can feel the warmth of the sun on our skin when we stand um, out of the shade. Um, and, and the plants, they rely on these EM waves too because they, plants do photosynthesis and with those photosynthesis, they convert the sun's energy. Well, they use the sun's energy um, in order to, to produce carbohydrates. And those carbohydrates, um, we then, you know, take as food and we eat it and animals eat it as well. And, you know, we eat the plants and we eat the animals. And if, if the EM waves weren't able to get to us, there would not be life on our planet. So EM waves are really, really, really important. And it's really, really important that they can travel through a vacuum. Two other things that you need to know about EM waves. They all travel at the same speed in a vacuum. They, they get slowed down when they go through materials of different densities. Like if it was trying to go through your window, it would slow down the light. Okay. Um, which is why we get refraction. And we'll look at that in a later video. But through a vacuum, they all go at the same speed. They go at the speed of light which makes sense doesn't it considering one of the types of em waves is visible light if you um can remember the speed of light let's see if you can pause it and see if you can it's three times ten to the power eight meters per second very very fast okay every single second 300 million meters per second every single second light will travel 300 million meters it's the fastest thing we know of the other thing that we need to know about in terms of transverse waves oh sorry em waves is that they are transverse they are all transverse okay so they are all the oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer so i'll go over those three key points again they are transverse they all travel at the speed of light and they can travel through a vacuum. So when we say that the EM waves can be um, put into categories, what we actually mean is that the EM wave is one continuous spectrum. And it's, it's a family of seven different um, different waves. Um, and they're different because they've got different wavelengths. And those different wavelengths mean that they have different properties. They behave differently. But they are one continuous spectrum. So I've tried to draw this beforehand because I've, I always have troubles drawing this diagram. So what I've tried to represent here is at this end, we've got a long wavelength. There's, there's a the longer distance between... Um, uh, between the peaks or any part identical part of the wave and at this end we've got a very short very very short wavelength so we go to so we go from um so the wavelength is actually getting bigger this way so the, it's increasing wavelength so the wavelength is getting bigger that way so that's that's the long wavelength and this is a short wavelength end now in terms of the wavelength you do actually need to know these the numbers so the very shortest wavelengths are 10 to the power of minus 15 meters okay so really really tiny and the longest wavelengths are really quite large 10 to the power of 4 meters that's thousands of meters so we go long distance, like thousands of distance between the peaks. And at this side, absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny distances between the peaks. So if there are more waves per second, that means, well, sorry, there's shorter wavelength. That means that we should, we should have looked at this relationship before, but the frequency is going to be higher. So the frequency is going to actually be higher at this end. So if this is frequency. So this is low frequency and this is high frequency 
So short wavelength, high frequency, high frequency, and long wavelength, low frequency. And the other thing is energy. So the high frequency waves actually transfer more energy. So low energy, and this is high energy. So I've told you about the spectrum. So now we need to know about the actual waves. Now, sometimes you will, you can see this drawn both ways. We could start it here with the, 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 um, the shorter wavelengths and the longer wavelengths at this side. But just because the way I like to remember this and I find it easy, I like to start with the longer wavelengths. And the, the reason why, and the way, I, the way that I did this is I use um, a little memory aid, uh, a memnomic. I remember that rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses. Okay, it's a very strange little memnomic. Okay, but I can picture that scene in my head. Okay, I've got this person, all right, and they've got these x-ray glasses on. The reason they use their, their x-ray glasses is because it allows them to see through the cards. So they're in Vegas, they're, they're, they're in, they can see through all the cards, they know what all the cards are. So they're uh, they're generating loads and loads of money. So they're, they're rich, all right? There we go, look, look how happy is with all, all this money. And if I remember that rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses, I can actually remember the order. So I know that this longest wavelength, so this goes in, this is why I remember it this way, because it's the longest wavelength, is radio. So these are radio waves. So we've got radio waves there. And then the M is microwaves. Okay, so rich um, radio waves, microwaves. Then the I is infrared. Infrared, infrared waves. The V is visible light. That's the, the only part of the spectrum that as human beings that we can actually see. And the reason I, sp I, I do my waves this way is because I, you often get asked to zoom in a little bit on visible light because, because it's the one we can see, we should know more about it. Um, so infrared comes here. So I'm, I'm going to put red because what infrared means, it means um, uh, like uh, below red, so infra. So here is the red. And if you remember the colors of the rainbow, so Richard of York gave battle in vain. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That actually tells you what this next one's gonna be. So the next one is below or well, above violet. So we've got visible, and then the U is ultra violet. And the X are X rays. That's easy. His X ray glasses are his actually his X rays. And the G is gamma. Okay, so you need to know those seven categories. Let's go through them. So we've got the longest wavelength are radio, but they have the lowest frequency and the lowest energy. Then we've got microwaves, slightly longer wave, uh, slightly shorter wavelength, sorry. Then infrared with a slightly shorter wavelength. Then the visible light made up of red light, orange light, yellow light, green light, blue light, indigo light, and violet light. Then we've got ultraviolet, then x-rays, and then gamma. And by the time we get to this gamma, these waves have got a very short wavelength, but a very, very high frequency, and they are given a lot, they're transferring a lot of energy, which means that these waves, these gamma waves are very dangerous. The x-rays are pretty dangerous too, as is ultraviolet. These are the more dangerous waves. And I'm gonna go into that in a little bit more detail when we look at the next part, which is where we're gonna look at um, the uses and the dangers of these waves. But I just thought I'd mention this now because we these three waves are known as the ones that can ionize, okay? And ionize means is that when they collide with an atom, uh, sorry, or a, or, or a cell, they can actually remove electrons, which gives the which gives the that atom a charge, and turns it into an ion, and that um, that can cause copying errors when those um, those cells are, are copied by the body, 
which can then lead to mutations and those mutations can lead to cancer. So these are very dangerous at this end of the spectrum. These radio waves are really safe. So we're gonna go into that in a little bit more detail. You need to be able to know um, the uses and the dangers of the different waves that make up the electromagnetic spectrum. So I'm going to start with long wavelengths and we're going to go to short wavelengths. I'm going to try and make this um, an overview because there's a lot of information here and this video could easily go on for a very long time and I want to keep it quite short. So I'm just going to cover the absolute basics. So longest wavelength, uh, we're going to use my memory aid which is rich men in Vegas use x-ray glasses. Ah, is radio waves. Radio waves. So radio waves are the longest wavelength. And what radio waves do is they're used for communication. They're used for radio communication. They're used for, um, so let's draw, let's draw a radio. They're used for radio communication. They're used for TV. That's the ones with the aerial communication. Um, and then when we get to the, the shorter ones, so microwaves are actually a type of radio wave too. But micro means small. So these are, these are um, a lower, um, shorter wavelength radio waves. They're used for mobile phone communication. Okay, so they're all communication. Microwaves are also used to heat food too. I'm just going to go a little bit more detail about how radio waves are transmitted because you will need to know this if you're doing a high paper. So, is an antenna. An antenna has an electron. So antennas are made of metal and in, in the metals have got free electrons. So if we move an electron forwards and backwards, if we oscillate it, we get an electric field produced in the form of a wave. We also get a magnetic field, that's why it's an EM wave. But we're just going to look at the electric. So if you've got a receiver, so your aerial, what it does is your aerial is also made of metal, which contains electrons. So that electron gets oscillated at the same frequency as the, the one that was um, oscillated by the transmitter, which is which how it picks up the information. And it's how you can tune into the radio station. You just match the frequency. Um, one of the other things that I really, really need to know about in terms of radio waves is this, is that light and all EM waves travel in straight lines. So if you wanted to send your signal to a radio station that was exactly in line with you, that would be fine. But in reality, the world isn't like that. The world is curved. It's round like that. So it's a sphere. So you might actually need to get your radio signal to here. Now, some radio waves are able to do this depending on their wavelength, because around the world is this is a is our atmosphere. And part of the atmosphere is this is this layer called the ionosphere. Now, one of the properties of EM waves that I haven't mentioned yet is that they can be reflected and they can be refracted. We'll talk about reflection and refraction um in later videos because they need to go into a little bit more depth. But basically reflection you should be used to um to see in, in mirrors. You look in a mirror, you see yourself staring back at you. That's reflection. So the wave is sent out in a straight line, hits the ionosphere, it bounces back at exactly the same angle that it goes in at. So we've got, hits the ionosphere, bounces back, and therefore it can get around this curve of the world. So that's how radio waves work, is that they can bounce off the ionosphere. Sometimes, though, we need to go through the ionosphere, say with mobile phone signals, because mobile phones work by actually communicating with satellites. So you're here, okay, and you've got, you've got no body. <laughs> Let's put your body in. You're here, and you've got your mobile phone, and you've got to communicate with this satellite. Now, there is this ionosphere in the way, so if you sent a radio wave, it would just bounce off, and that would be no good. 
So you need to send a wave that can get through that ionosphere and that is microwaves. So mobile phones use microwaves to communicate um, with satellites and things outside of the ionosphere. The other use of microwaves is for heating your food up. Okay, so here's your microwave and within it, you've got some food of some kind spinning around on a plate. And as the microwaves um, penetrate it, they're absorbed by the food, it causes oscillations in the, the water molecules. And that causes um, the, the substance in the microwave to heat up. Um, but that's also a danger because it could cause your body to heat up as well because your body is, it has contains these, these same molecules that, that can be oscillated by the microwaves. So that could cause heating in you. Um, infrared waves, that's our next one down. Oh, it's spelled infra hyphen red, infra red. Uh, now I'm going to group these together because these are all used for communication. Oh, better spell words, right? Communication. So we said we could have radio waves, could be radio, TV, mobile phones, and infrared is used for um, remote controls. So you've got your TV, you wanna change the channel, you can't be bothered to get up off the sofa. So you point your remote control at it, that sends out a wave in a straight line, which transfers information to your TV. So infrared are used in remote controls. Um, they're also used for thermal imaging cameras. So let's say that you, um, sometimes on a night you hear a helicopter, terrible helicopter, but you hear a helicopter over and you think, oh, what's that helicopter doing? Looking for someone in, on the night, it's dark, can't see them. Well, in reality, they're using infrared camera. So let's say we've got someone here and they're hiding, right? They're, they're gonna hide under under a bush or in the shelter of a tree. Okay, or whatever this is. Maybe, in, maybe they're in a cave, all right? But they're hiding. So this infrared camera can detect heat. Um, so it will be able to see that this person is 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 um, giving out heat, emitting heat, whereas these rocks of the cave or the bushes aren't. So they will be able to see that person hiding there and then they can tell whoever it is that is looking for them exactly where they are. So infrared is heat. So when you stand in the sun and you feel the warmth on your skin, it's because of the infrared component um, of the EM waves. Um, the danger is though that it can actually burn your skin as well. So if you stand too close to a radiator, which is giving out heat and you put your hand on it and you leave your hand on it, you don't take it off when it hurts, you will burn your skin. The next one is visible. So this is the only part of the spectrum that we can see visible light. Now we're gonna have to separate this out a little bit more. So we've got infrared here. Um, and the, the key word there is the word red. So if we're going from long to short wavelength, the first um, the first wave that you can make out from visible light is the red wavelengths. So we've got, so I use another memnomic here. So I use Richard of York gave battle in vain. Um, but the other one you can use is you could use Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. Okay, and that just helps you remember the colors in the correct order. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I'm gonna change that G because it's not very good G. There we go. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. <laughs> it's small with the words there. Okay, they are the different colors uh, the different wavelengths of light which which produce color. You need to know a little bit how color works. Let's say we look at an object and you shine in your white light into this object. So it might be from a light bulb or from a torch or something. Let's say it's from a torch. So you are shining in your light from this torch. And this is white light. So white light is white, appears white because it's our eyes take in all of these different wavelengths and we see them together as white. So we've got Within there, we've got the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, and the violet are transmitted. Now, 
if this object looks white, that means that it is going to reflect and taken in by your eye. There's your eye. Then your eye is getting all of the colors, the red, orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, the violet. So that is reflecting all of those different wavelengths. But not everything looks white. Sometimes things look black. So how does that work? Well, if it's black, it means that no light is reflected. So this is actually going to absorb all of that right, the light. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So the object has absorbed all the light. None of it has been reflected. So that object looks black to your eye. Imagine if you turn all the lights off in your house and everything looks black because there's no light reflected. But some things have a color. So let's say it was orange. Let's say this object is orange. Well, that, that means is that the object absorbs all of the different wavelengths of light apart from orange. So the only one that is given out and reflected to the eye is the orange. Therefore, it looks orange. Same thing for the yellow. It would, it would absorb all wavelengths, but yellow gives and the, the yellow is reflected. That's how light works. So the use of visible light is it allows us to see things. The, um, the other use of visible light is um, broadband and fiber optic cables. So if you want to send information through the internet, the way that you do it is we use this thing, which is called a fiber optic cable. Remember one of the properties of EM waves is that they all are reflected. So inside of this, these cables, like the cables that you use for your internet are mirrors and the light is sent, it hits the mirror, it reflects off, it hits the mirror, it reflects off. And remember this, this law of reflection is that whichever way, um, the angle that it goes in is the same angle that it is reflected out at. So like this, it keeps going, which means that it can go from one place to another. And these light waves travel at the speed of light. So we've gone in and then we've, we've come out. So information has gone from A to B at the speed of light. So really, really fast. And we can, we can bend these wires and we can put them under the ground. So, so that information can be traveled over very, very long distances, very, very quickly. That's optical fibers. So used in broadband um, and the internet. What are the dangers? What are the dangers of visible light? Well, the danger is uh, if you, here's the sun, if you stand on the earth and if you stare at it and you don't put your sunglasses on, okay? He's, he's put his sunglasses on because this person's smart. But if you don't put those sunglasses on, those waves can damage your eyes. So. Why we have to put our sunglasses on so infrared can damage your eyesight ultraviolet ultra remember this because it's above violet okay ultra so the ultraviolet how is that used well ultraviolet is used one of the ways is let's say we've got some money now some people forge their money okay they do they forge their uh, their 20 pound notes so the shots sometimes what they do is they shine infrared light onto these notes. And if um, um, if if it's a real note, it looks a certain way under the infrared light. If it's a forgery and just plain paper, it will look totally different. So they can see whether or not something's a forgery. So that's one of the uses of, of ultraviolet. Um, the other use of ultraviolet is that sometimes people go in and they, uh, they shine these lights on themselves. Okay, like this. Um, and the reason that they do that is because they want a lovely suntan. Okay, so sunbeds use these same UV lights and that damages the skin, which can cause a suntan. But that's also a danger is that we can, if you overexpose it, this can lead to skin cancer. Okay, so that's why we say you have to put your sunblock on when you go in the sun because the sunblock actually blocks these UV, these UV ultraviolet particle, um, sorry, waves, which can damage your skin. So dangers lead to skin cancer. The way that this works is that, that what we call ionizing. And ionizing means that they can remove the electrons from um, cells to turn them into an ion. So you, you get a charged particle. And when the, the cells copy again, there will be a copying error in the cell. So it'll be somehow it will be a little bit different than the cell that it was before because of these copying errors. 
um, and we call that a mutation. And these mutations can lead to cancer. So ionizing radiation is really dangerous because it can lead to cancers. So ultraviolet is ionizing. The next one that is, is ionizing is, is x-rays. So the uses of x-rays, well, we use x-rays to look um, for our skin to look at bones. Um, so you lay down on a on a bed or something like this, okay, and you say, oh, doctor, I've hurt my leg. Something wrong with it, but you can't see the issue. Well, what we do is the ultraviolet light, sorry, the x-rays go through your body and out the other side, and they're absorbed by bone by any any dense material but they're not absorbed by the soft material okay so the bones will absorb it wherever there is a break in the bone it won't absorb it so you'll see that through and then when you look at the the picture afterwards of, of, of this leg you'll see oh that the bone's fine there but there's a bit missing there all right that that bone is broken so that's how x-rays work that this where there's that, that one there has been able to pass through and it forms an image on a, on a photographic plate um, so they're used for, for looking at looking at bones inside the body. You wouldn't use an X-ray to look at a, a baby or, or something like that in, inside of um, inside of its mother because the the X-rays are they're also ionizing. So we have to use them sparingly. We have to think is is it a risk versus a reward? So if you've got a broken leg and you, you need it fixing, you need to be able to see that bone to know how to fix it. So it's worth exposing you to a little bit of risk of uh, of the mutations because it you would need quite a lot of x-rays to 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 build those up um it's worth exposing to that risk so that you haven't got a broken leg for the rest of your life or it doesn't heal properly but in terms of x-ray and um a pregnant woman we can use we can use ultrasound which is we can still see the image of the baby and we're not um putting that that baby at risk of these ionizing waves so x-rays, again, ionizing, which means they knock the electrons off um, cells, which means that they produce copying errors, which means that they can get mutations, which can lead to cancer. Another, um, the next, the very last one is gamma. And gamma is the most dangerous. I'm putting these dots next to them because these represent ionizing. These are the dangerous. And remember, this one is the shortest wavelength, highest frequency, so most most energy is being transferred here so this is the most dangerous it's a danger it gives it its property though because what we can do is we can fire a very targeted gamma wave at a cancerous cell because what gamma does is it ionizes and it just destroys them so it can kill the cancer cells the problem is is it can also kill the the healthy cells around the cancer cells too, which is why when people are undergoing radiotherapy, they often can get quite ill. As well as killing cancer cells, it can kill other type of cells too. So let's say that you've been using a scalpel or something during an operation and you want to sterilize that equipment. You shine your gamma ray at it. It kills all of the bacteria on it. What you can even do is you can even put this in a bag and then shine it at it. And it means that that is going to be totally sterile until you open that bag. Okay. So used for sterilizing equipment, used for cancer treatment. But if you are exposed to gamma rays, again, they are ionizing, which can actually cause a mutation, which can lead to cancer. So gamma rays, you want to make sure that you are using some kind of protection. If you're, you're coming across them a lot, like someone who is giving x-rays, they leave the room when they're administrating gamma rays so that, they, that the gamma rays don't go through their body. Um, or they would wear a lead apron and lead is able to block the gamma rays. Okay, so quite a lot of information to take in. They're the uses and the dangers of the EM waves.
Let's start with an exam question that is really typical of a foundation paper. So the first thing I always do when, when you get an exam question is to read it really, really carefully. So it says, um, the diagram shows the electromagnetic spectrum, the pictures show four devices that use the EM waves. Each device uses a different type of electromagnetic wave. Right, there we go. We're gonna annotate the word different because what that means is that's telling us that none of, um, none of these waves can have the same line going to them, okay? So radio, cannot be ultraviolet nothing can be ultraviolet because ultraviolet is already the sunbed one so that's telling us we can't use that one draw a line from each device to the electromagnetic wave so that's what we have to do we have to draw a line from each device so it's really useful to annotate these exam questions the next thing you should always do is is check how many marks it's worth so it's worth three marks so that tells us how much how many things we're going to do so we need three lines so let's start with radio so radio waves yeah radio waves Radio waves, radios use radio waves. All right, big surprise with that one. Um, nice, easy marks. Um, the next one is a bit trickier. So TV remote controls. Well, we talked about in this video that TV remote controls um, are infrared. So that is the infrared one. And the filament layer, well, we can think about that one and we can use a little bit of, um, little bit of um, linking of our ideas there. So if you, if you want to... Um, turn a lamp on you do that because you want to see more clearly so the only part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see is visible light therefore lamps must use visible light okay so there are three lines that should be our three marks let's try something a little bit more challenging this question is more typical of um, a question that you would get on the end of a foundation paper or towards the start of a, um, a higher paper. It's a question that asks us just to recall some, some knowledge. Um, we're not having to so think of any, uh, link it to anything different or we're not having to um, take some knowledge and, and apply it into a different context. So it's, it's quite a straightforward question. It's made of two parts. The first question is worth two marks. So state one, now that's always key. Whenever you these words in, in bold, it gives you a number, one example, because what that means is if you put two, then the examiner will think that you're hedging your bets and therefore you can't get any marks. So we have to put one. So state one example of the use of each type of radiation for communication. So infrared, well, we've just looked at infrared in the last question. We know that it's used in... Um, remote controls. Okay, and another answer that we could have is we could also say that it's used um, for thermal imaging, but remote controls is, a, is the most standard one. The next one is microwaves. So there's two really common ones. Again, we can only put one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put two because I'm going to give you two options, but you would only write one in the exam. So we could use it for heating food. Or the, the other really main one for microwaves are, are mobile phone communications. So mobile phones use microwaves too. So either of those would be absolutely fine. So the next question, again, another two marks. It looks a little bit more intimidating because you've got more space to write. Let's see if it is. Some of the properties of infrared and microwaves are the same. State two of these properties. Okay, let's box that two. So we want two properties that are the same. Well, in fact, that's actually talking about all EM waves because microwaves and infrared are just electromagnetic waves. So what properties do we know about electromagnetic waves are the same? Well, we know that they are, um, they are both transverse waves. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a few options. They're both transverse waves. All EM waves travel at the same speed. So they, they travel at the same speed. Um, and that speed is the speed of light. Okay, what else do we know? Um, they all travel through a vacuum, don't they? they yeah, they can, all EM waves can travel through a vacuum. So it's can travel through a vacuum 
Is there anything else? Transverse, they travel at the same speed, they travel through a vacuum. Well, the other things that we could write, um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell them because you don't need to watch me writing, is um, they can all be reflected. Um, they can all be refracted. Uh, yeah, I think they're, they're the main ones. All travel at the same speed. They're, they're, all, they're both transverse. They can both travel through a vacuum. They can both be reflected. They can both be refracted. That'll do. We only need two in order to get our two marks. Okay, let's try something really challenging now. This question is very much typical of a high level question. Um, it's a lot harder because it's it's not really telling us um, obviously exactly what we have to do. We're going to have to break our question down here to try and figure out what it is that we need to do. So first thing, it's worth three marks. So um, circle that to, to know that you need to make at least three points. So let's read it. Different wavelengths of light can be used to transmit um, information along optical fibers. The graph below shows how the percentage of instant light trans um, light transmitted through a fiber varies with the wavelength of light and the length of fiber. So we're going to have to talk about the graph. Compare, right, there we go. We've, we've found our first command word. Compare tells us to use similarities and differences. Excuse the shorthand, but I know that when I write like this, my writing gets a bit scruffy. So similarities and differences. And what are we looking at the similarities and differences for? Well, we're looking at the similarities and differences for the percentage of instant light transmitted. So that is the y-axis. So we're going to use these words in our answer. Through the different fibers over the wavelengths. And that's this axis. That's the x-axis. That is our, our different wavelengths. So... What we have to do, and I'm not going to write all of this down, I'm just going to talk you through it because this is the, the type of question where for me to write on here would get very, very messy. But you need to create some kind of plan. So you need to know similarities. So I'm going to look for things that are the same between both. So what is the same and what is different? Now, in a compare question, you have to make at least one statement how they're the same and at least one statement where they're different. Now this is worth three marks, so we're going to need maybe two sames and one different, or two difference and one of the same. It doesn't matter, but we have to have similarities and we have to have differences. So let's first off, let's have a look, see what, what we can look at. Let's find a point for the same. Well, how are these two lines the same is what it's asking. So we've got the 50 meter dotted line and we've got the 100 meter um, solid line. Well, we can look at the pattern. Look at the pattern of the graph. And you just describe that pattern because in both, I'm going to draw a line down the middle. In both of them, we start from a quite a, a high percentage transmitted at this wavelength. So we've got a wavelength of four. So as the wavelength increases, the percentage transmitted for both waves, for both um, different fiber limbs, initially decreases. Then it reaches a, a low point here. And then it starts to increase again. So they both follow the same pattern. You would just describe that pattern. You would say something along the lines of, for both fiber lengths, as the wavelength increases, the percentage of incident, um, of incident light transmitted initially starts high, then decreases, and then uh, increases to being high again. And that's the same for both. What else is the same for both? Let me get rid of this line. Um, another thing that we can spot is that they both um, different fiber limbs have their low point here. This is their minimum. So we would have to use that figure. So we get at 5.0 and we have to use the units times 10 to the minus 7 meters is the, the minimum percentage. So I'm just going to write min percentage um, of light transmitted. That's a similarity. There's another similarity here too, because if that's the minimum, here is the maximum. So we could write at 6.5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters equals the maximum um, percentage of light transmitted. So you need to write those in full sentences, but it's always good to put a little plan out first. And notice how I'm using the, that I'm using the terms on the axes. 
So we've got three things that we could talk about this same, but if we did that, we'd limit our marks because we, we haven't compared. We've just said how oh, they're similar. So how are they different? Well, the, the obvious difference, let's get rid of this stuff. The obvious difference is the pattern. Again, it follows the same pattern, but the percentage of light transmitted is different for the two different um, lengths of fiber. So the dashed line is always, at, every, at each wavelength is always um, transmitting a higher percentage of light. Whereas the solid line, the longer one, the 100 meters is always at each, at the same wavelength transmitting um, a lower percentage of light. So that's how they're different. It's the, the 50 meter fiber always transmits um, a greater, I was going to use an up arrow, a greater percentage of light. Okay, so that's the, the most obvious one. So I would just choose two from there and one from there. That would give me my three marks. If I had enough time, I'd choose three from here and one from here because that would give me a better chance of getting those three marks. Um, if your statements don't contradict each other, it doesn't matter if you, you write multiple things. But once you start to contradict each other, then the examiner would think that you're hedging your bets and then they would uh, they would cancel out those marks. For instance, if I was to say, oh, a similarity, the pattern is the same in both, but a difference, the pattern is different in both. They, they, they contradict each other. I'm just, I'm just guessing at that point. So the examiner would notice that. Okay, so... Um, I think that'll do for, for this one on, on uh, electromagnetic waves and I will see you next time.